name is Matt Wyckoff. I am the co-curator of the exhibition Young, Gifted, and Black, the Lumpkin Bokutsi Family Collection of Contemporary Art. I am here with Clifford Owens, uh, one of the artists featured in the exhibition. Um, and I would just like to thank Cliff for uh, joining me today to do this uh, short interview. Thanks, Cliff. Thanks for having me, Matt. Really appreciate the time to get to talk about, you know, how I've contributed to Bernard and Carmine's collection and the piece in particular that you and Antoine chose. Great, thank you. Um, and I sort of started thinking about uh, sort of what to ask you during this after I saw you sort of posting about sort of the immediate prospects for performance art in the middle of a global pandemic. and. Um, it sort of made me realize that a big part of your practice is as sort of uh, an image maker. So many of your performances get distilled down into these really poignant images. And the particular image that Antoine and I chose is sort of an image in its own right uh, and wasn't part of a, a performance. And so I sort of got to start thinking about that aspect of your career. And I thought I would love to sort of just have you talk about yourself as an image maker and, and that image, um, which is titled Untitled, and it's from 2015. Uh, but before I have you sort of respond to that, I was uh, going to just read uh, a short excerpt from the exhibition essay that sort of talks about that image and just as an introduction. Um, so I'll okay. read that, and then I'll just let you sort of talk about that image and its creation. So uh, this sort of just picks up in the middle of a paragraph uh, that's talking about how several artists in the exhibition had responded to ideas of nature or the landscape. Uh, and so I'll just pick up kind of in the middle of that. Uh, not to mention the volumes that should be written on Clifford Owen's self-portrait as a recumbent, hands up, don't shoot, neutered, tucked, nude amid a verdant green pastoral landscape. Elizabeth Alexander's poem, American Sublime, might fit to key the many representations of nature on view in the exhibition. Alexander's violent sunshine, gentle luminosity, and vast, craggy, undomesticated landscapes occur entirely in parentheses. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the question and that really marvelous quote. Really dense, really a lot to unpack, I think, that quote, but maybe I can touch on a little bit of it. And I mean, I suppose thinking about my practice in terms of um, producing images, I often think about, often talk about how in performance art, uh, the body is an image. And so my work, I think, in many ways, uh, the performance based work such as that photograph that's in the exhibition, um, certainly centers on the body because it's a recognizable image and because it signifies many things on many levels simultaneously. And I think to place a body, a nude body, I like this quote, the neutered body <laughs> in the landscape is a really um, specific way to communicate different information from a particular kind of location within a particular kind of setting, a natural setting, to say different things about that body. I mean, of course, the, the neutered uh, thing kind of castration anxiety right of the tucking the penis right between the legs thinking about perhaps historically how women the nude female body has figured in the landscape uh just historically with western art history is you know pretty consistent with that representation Certainly in the medium and the history of photography, you see the same thing. So I guess I'm going on a little bit. And just to get back to that picture and this idea of a landscape, that particular landscape is a constructed uh, landscape uh, in the back of a building that was consecrated during the Civil War. 
uh, purchased by artist Dustin Yellen, and is now a place called Pioneer Works. And so I was there for a brief uh, summer residency in 2014, and I did another project uh, in conjunction with the residency uh, called uh, Seminar, uh, which is a whole other conversation. But uh, at some point, I had a good friend of mine, uh, Matthew McNulty, uh, make a photograph of me from a window in Pioneer Works uh, that was down on this uh, simulated landscape, kind of constructed landscape, you know, in the back of what is otherwise just kind of a plot of uh, gravelly land. You know? Right. And so uh, and I think about that, I guess, right now, uh, because of the moment we're in, in terms of the initial question about like distancing, is you know he shot it from a distance, uh, right. uh, from a window, and there is a certain kind of voyeuristic quality to it, and um, performing for the camera, not for an audience in that instance, which is a what happens in a lot of my work. Another work that's in the in Carmine and Bernard's uh, collection is um, anthology uh, in Singa Night. Right. Uh, it's a massive uh, diptych uh, in which um, there's a big explosion. And that picture, those, uh, that diptych was staged for the camera. Right. Really, people in attendance were the curator, Chris Liu, event, the anthology project, my assistants, uh, and uh, the sort of studio, the, the, the project manager. Right. So it was really a performance for the camera, but ultimately just a few people got to witness it. Similarly, if you think about the construction of that picture, which I asked my friend to take the picture of, you know, sort of performing for him right, in right. this interesting way. So I don't know if that answers any of your questions. And <clears throat> after I made that picture, the hands up reference came. You know, that came later. Right. You know, it was it wasn't, it wasn't though, and it was not a sort of uh, direct reference to hands up black black. You were that wasn't a direct reference to that. Yeah, no, no. Um, I was thinking about other sort of formal things. Although, if that meaning now applies, I think that's kind of interesting, and I'm certainly interested in that too. Right. Um, do you know I mean, what I mean? Something that certainly, it was something that occurred to me in as a as a sort of viewer of the image and sort of taking the image apart and sort of trying to sort of look for, you know, kind of meaning in the image. It was certainly a, a sort of one of the gestures in the image that I was sort of trying to sort of pick apart and sort of get mm. at kind of where you were coming from. So it's interesting to hear you sort of speak about it as a kind of formal element. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that posed that, that posture, um, me in the grass with a tucked penis looking fiercely into the camera. It's yeah. just two things at the same time, a return of the gaze, kind of confrontation from a distance. Right. Is it a tease? Is it a recognition? But at the same time, a sort of vulnerability, yeah. sort of opening up, sort of very deliberate display of what should appear but is refused and that is sexuality perhaps right but that's back to the idea of the anxiety of castration though not my intention thinking about certainly a black man's body in a presumably natural world and natural environment as you right. started out with i mean all those <clears throat> All those things start to have resonance and meaning when they sort of collide in a single image. Sure. Do you yeah, know? It makes me think of like, sort of, I, one of the things I've always thought about your work is sort of, it sort of brings up all of these sort of power structures. Like it's sort of, you, you get this sense of like overlapping power structures when you're, when you're in one of your performances. Um, I, I think you have this way of sort of heightening an awareness of, the, the power of the audience, the power of the performer, you know, there's all these sort of competing sort of perceptions of, of authority in the room, you know, and um, 
and one of the you know one of the things about sort of the the nature image is like I, I don't think most people think of sort of nature itself as like a power structure but if you look at like the access to nature or representations of nature certainly or even the construction of nature as with the environment that your photo was taken and you've really quickly sort of run into the power structure sort of power structures that I think interest you and that like your work sort of often brings up and so it's interesting to sort of think about like nature and then the sort of manipulation of nature and the symbolism of nature and, and all of those things and, and and I think what you're speaking to kind of folds right into that sort of conversation about sort of power structures and things like that is that do you feel like that's a kind of accurate reading of yeah I mean I think some of my my work deals with you know power dynamics or you know, um, I mean, it's very complicated how power works, I yeah. think. And certainly many philosophies to approach the, that issue of power, yeah. how it's functioned historically. I mean, if you think about, I mean, of, you know, this idea of like, you know, nature is a kind of, nature is a powerful force. Right. Mother nature. I mean, what does nature really represent in the Western imagination? It represents God. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And the natural world has been sort of, um, in so many, so, you know, like reduced down to, it is a symbolic, right? That, that term, like nature, I don't know, whatever that means. I don't know what that, whatever that means. It's so complicated. <clears throat> but certainly I, I wonder if, you, are you kind of thinking about how human beings, how mankind attempts to control nature? I think so, yeah. And, and it's, it's sort of how its meaning has shifted, you know, sort of, I think, I think you've had sort of multiple incarnations of sort of what we want nature to be over yeah. the past 150, 200, 300 years. You know, I think it's, it's sort of shifted what we, what we want out of it, that concept. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that underlying sort of the broader perception of what nature is, there are all these sort of competing power structures, people competing for like what the meaning of, of that is. Um, I mean, I think, I think in some ways, maybe some of my work is asking the audience and certainly myself um, to always be aware of how we are dominating others. Right. And we dominate others often without not you know we, we're not doing it willfully right i mean you know it's really interesting we were just talking about children yeah you know i mean you and i as parents because we dominate our children we have power over them yeah right i mean so it's really interesting how we think and talk about power yeah and how it functions and sometimes i think in my performance-based projects like photographs of an audience, I'm not so much thinking about who has power over whom, but certainly sometimes thinking about how our power um, shifts. Perhaps we have power in some situations that we don't know. Right. Do you know? Um, yeah. Perhaps some of the, the, pro the performances photographs with an audience help me and others understand how our power dominates others. Right. I mean, to claim a heterosexual position in some of my performances presumes domination over homosexual people. Mm. In this culture, yeah. right? I mean, I've had performances where people have, where I've asked the question, if you are a person from an affluent background, stand in front of the camera. And for people to do that publicly says what? To make your power that explicit in a public setting. I mean, it's really fascinating to me. Yeah. I don't know that maybe it's, these are stupid things and we all kind of understand it, but. Well, we, I think we, yeah, I mean, I think I'm interested think under, in that. We understand them and we don't. You know, I mean, we, that's the thing is we understand them in flashes, you know, and, and I think sort of art and, and performances and images. I mean, I think that's kind of what I was getting at about your performances is that sort of during the course of these things, you sort of have this tangible awareness 
of these structures. And then, you know, when you go to talk about them, it, it gets muddled and complicated. But, you know, I think art can sort of manif can bring them to light in this way that you can really sense things and feel things. And then yeah. you know, when you go to try to sort of parse it all out, it, it sort of gets complicated again. But I think yeah. you know, part of the power of, of an image like the one that we're discussing is I think it, it sort of, you can look at it and you can sort of feel all the things that you think you know until you go to try to describe them, you know? Yeah. It sort of crystallizes those things, you know, in this really, yeah. in this really wonderful way. Yeah, thank you so much. I thought it was um, a really good decision an interesting decision to put in the exhibition. I was happy that uh, the both of you chose it. Yeah, I, we, we because, both loved it. As... Yeah, and I think it creates some really interesting resonance with some of the other pieces. Absolutely. In the yeah. exhibitions. A nice conversation that begins to happen about kind of power. Right. And anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that that is a uh, is a wonderful uh, sort of okay. thing to sort of put out uh, to the world. So I just uh, I, I thank you again for sort of joining me for this interview and um, and obviously for um, you know your your inclusion in the show and it was real pleasure sort of working with your work and and sort of situating it within the other works in the exhibition. So thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it. Yeah. See you see you in the organic world soon. Yeah. We'll see you. Thank you, Cliff.